want to uh, accomplish with a lawsuit on behalf of my country is a nuclear free world. Uh, it is a uh, it is sometimes uh, said that we are too small and too insignificant to make a, uh, an impression on those that must make those decisions. But we have a moral and a legal mandate as members of the treaty and as also a people who have experienced the, the horrors of nuclear contamination and nuclear poisoning. It is incumbent on us to make a statement to the world and to remind our development partners that it is necessary for them to, to own up to their promise to reduce nuclear weapons in this earth. We are hopeful that as a result of this, there will be more interest, there will be, there will, it will generate more uh, uh, a momentum for the world to realize that it's not just climate change, it's not just uh, uh, Ebola that's threatening the world. It is also, and even more so, nuclear weapons. And uh, nuclear power plants might as well be bombs. Absolutely. No one has yet been able to convince me that it's safe to store the waste that comes out of these, these uh, facilities and how we would deal with them. The Marshall Islands uh, is a nuclear storage area. The United States actually bulldozed into a former atomic bomb crater. Tons and tons and tons of plutonium contaminated material uh, and other contaminants. And they sealed the top of this, this, this huge uh, 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 storage facility with, with concrete. It's so big you can see it from space. And it is now being undermined by climate change and is cracking on the rims by climate change. So this is a natural example that I like to point out of how those two items cannot be separated. We're barely six feet above sea level, two meters. So the, the ocean is going to infiltrate into that crater? Absolutely, it already is. And we are asking the United States for assistance to remedy that they're claiming that it's our responsibility and not theirs. And that our government must finance, bring in the technology to remedy this very dangerous situation. When Fukushima occurred, I called two of my best friends who like to talk about this, these issues with me in the markets. And I told them, you watch. There will be denial, there will be outright lying, and then in the end they'll classify the information. It's a repeat of the testing program. They, 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 they've been mobilizing with the private sector, with Tokyo uh, Electric, to convince people that very soon they'll be able to move back to these contaminated areas. That the uh, problem of cleaning up is minor, that they can do uh, just as well cleaning that up as they can clean up a, as any kind of contamination. All of this is not true. All of this is not true. Denial, outright lies, and classifying. This is the same issue we have with the United States. They continue to classify material that we will need to make educated decisions about what we should do with our islands and our people and our, and our communities. Until there is full disclosure, there cannot be any closure on the nuclear issue. The United States claims that they did not purposefully expose people to radiation in order to study them. There are many of us who don't think that's the case at all. We think that people were actually deliberately exposed. But even if they were not expo deliberately exposed, once exposed, they conducted what they, were, what they called the 4.1 project, which is a study of human beings exposed to radiation. And they studied. They did not treat, they studied. So that's big difference, and people don't realize that. Brookhaven Laboratories in New York, uh, Livermore Laboratories in California, they're all part of this, this exercise. And we want to make sure that that information is also reduced. They gave people numbers after they were exposed. They gave two, two 
fetuses that were still in the wombs of their mothers numbers for that study. So they, they will deny it, but I think that we have sufficient information to prove that that actually took place as a government project in the Marshall Islands. And, and they're not releasing any of those results? No, they're not releasing them. They're, they're, they're saying it's classified, and then sometimes they, they say, no, it's personal information we cannot release, and all kinds of excuses. But the United States is, is, is playing a, a very hard line with us on this one, uh, refusing to share what we think is information necessary for us to, to manage our own survival. And, uh, and now with everybody else who's been exposed through the accident at Fukushima, for instance, yes. they're, they're claiming that they don't have adequate studies. One of, the, one of their favorite lines during this whole campaign to obtain information was that the information they gathered from the testing program in the Marshall, that is vis-a-vis -vis exposed people, uh, was statistically insignificant. I'm yes. so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you for your, your continued interest and please contact us whenever you want more information. I'd we'll be very happy to share it with you.
Texas, which only in those famous subs and on earth, by means of the brand called the cancer, lasts for 250,000 years, causes lung cancer, liver cancer, testicular cancer, damages fetuses so they born with the bones. since World War II. 
The Marshall Islands are at the edge of climate change impact right now. Our islands stand nearly six feet above sea level. And although we have nothing to do with the pollution of the atmosphere, although we have nothing to do with poisoning of carbon dioxide and all of those things that cause climate change, we are one of the five most vulnerable countries in the world. We are already feeling the effects of climate change. We have high tides, we have droughts, we have people being displaced from their homelands because of the rising seas. We came here to New York to bring our story to our friends in the United States, to share it with you so that during the march you can also share with the others who are here. There is no benefit to the world if we save it from climate change but allow nuclear weapons to wipe us out. So we cannot separate one from the other. We must fight for climate justice, but we must also fight for nuclear justice, because one without the other is not sufficient to guarantee a safe and peaceful world for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Thank you very much.